to the Trial of the Black Report, where we report on what's new in prehistory. I'm Sean P. Metty. Nick Rafterton is out on assignment this week. Before we begin, we would like to encourage you, if you are feeling inclined, to consider subscribing to S'mores and Dinosaurs. It would really help out our channel. Now, with that business out of the way, on to our international desk for our lead story. <music> Day. A new dinosaur species related to Tyrannosaurus rex has been discovered on the Isle of Wight. Recently reported by the BBC, paleontologists at the University of Southampton believe four bones found in Shanklin last year belong to a new species of theropod dinosaur. It lived in the Cretaceous period 115 million years ago and is estimated to have been up to four meters long, that's 13 feet for you Yanks. It has been named Vector Innovator Innipotius and belongs to the group of dinosaurs that includes Tyrannosaurus rex and modern day birds. The name refers to the large ursex found in some of the bones from the neck, back and tail of the creature which is one of the traits that helped the scientists identify its theropod origins. These air sacs, also seen in modern birds, were extensions of the lung, and it's likely they helped fuel an efficient breathing system while also making the skeleton lighter. Chris Barker, who led the University of Southampton study, said, We were struck by just how hollow this animal was. It's riddled with air spaces, part of its skeleton, must have been rather delicate. Barker went on to say that the record of theropod dinosaurs from the mid-Cretaceous period in Europe isn't that great, so it's been really exciting to be able to increase our understanding of the diversity of dinosaur species from this time. For those who are wondering, no, dinosaurs are not usually found in Shanklin. It is likely the Vector Innovator lived in an area just north of where the remains were found, with the carcass having washed out into the shallow sea nearby. The university findings are due to be published in the Journal of Papers in Paleontology and co-authored by those who discovered the fossils. Back to our non-international desk in Cincinnati, Ohio. <laughs> Thank you, international version of myself. Now on to our second story. Giant cannibalistic owls found in the Andes Mountains. During the Pleistocene epoch. It's one sentence. You couldn't fit that all on one slide. Fine. <laughs> According to a recent article from the Smithsonian Magazine, fossils have been found in the equatorial Andes of a giant owl that nested high in a cave and dined on other owl species. This giant owl, Osseo ecuadorianesis, had a height of more than 2.3 feet and a wingspan of more than 5 feet. And li uh, it lived roughly 40,000 years ago during the Pleistocene epoch. In the cave where the fossils were discovered, scientists uncovered the remains of several small mammals, like mice, shrews, and rabbits, in addition to fossilized bird bones. The avian bones belong to three other owl species. Researchers say that the kind of breakage and decay that, is, uh, that they observed is typical when bones are exposed to stomach acid. The Osseo-Equidorianesis bones are larger and did not show signs of having undergone digestion suggesting that it was likely the predator and owner of the burrow. In other words, this giant owl was cannibalistic. Researchers suspect that Osseo ecuadorianesis, like many birds, suffered in the changing climate at the end of the Ice Age, and that ultimately caused their extinction. For our fans of ornithology, or the avian dinosaurs, Osseo ecuadorianesis was just slightly larger or equivalent to the largest of the Eurasian eagle owls. This popular owl can be seen as a frequent resident of zoos in America and naturally in the wild of their home ranges in Europe. And now, 
on to entertainment news. A recent New York Times article provided both glimpses into some of the sets and props being used in the upcoming Jurassic World Dominion film, but also a window into what is being done to ensure safe working environments for the cast and crew of the film. Detailed, all of this was detailed in a 107-page safety manual that details everything from the infrared temperature scanners the cast and crew encounter upon the arrival to the vacuum-sealed meals provided by masked workers standing behind plastic partitions in the takeout-only cafeteria. Universal has divided the production into two categories. The larger one is made up of the departments that don't need access to the set during the filming, like construction and props. The more exclusive category, called The Green Zone, includes the director, the cast, and only a central crew, like camera operators and the sound department. Those working inside The Green Zone receive COVID-19 tests three times a week, and the sets are fogged with an antiviral mist before each use. The, cha the chairs that the actors sit in between takes are surrounded by orange cones to remind people to remain socially distant. When there is more lag time during the day, the cast can retire to a special green zone living room complete with couches, blankets, lamps, and plants. There are numerous sinks, and each time someone leaves or enters the green zone, he or she must wash their hands. As for dinosaur reveals, one of the three new pictures from the set confirms the identity of a returning species. Seen in this picture, we can see a member of the props department reading what appears to be a crate of Compsacthanasis. This small dinosaur was featured in the second of the Jurassic Park films, The Lost World, and has made subsequent appearances in Jurassic Park 3, Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom, and the short film, Battle at Big Rock. In real life, Compsacthanasis was a turkey-sized theropod that lived during the late Jurassic period in what is now Europe. Compsacthanasis is one of the few dinosaur species whose diet modern science knows with certainty. The remains of the small agile lizards, uh, the remains of small agile lizards are preserved in the bellies of both specimens that have been collected of this species. Ba da ba 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 Camp Cretaceous. In a story originally reported on by Collect Jurassic, Universal Pictures and Netflix have partnered up with the fast food giant McDonald's to mark the arrival of their brand new animated series, Camp Cretaceous. New photographs of an upcoming McDonald's Happy Meal promotion have been revealed. The partnership will see Happy Meal boxes adorned with the Camp Cretaceous branding, which includes the iconic Jurassic Gates. Alongside the branded Happy Meal boxes will come a series of four dinosaur figures, including Tyrannosaurus Rex, Bumpy, the baby Ankylosaurus, Toro, the Carnotosaurus, and a Triceratops. Alongside the dinosaur toys, kids will be treated to one of four books which explores the dinosaurs which appear in the upcoming show. These include Horned Dinosaurs, Ferocious Dinosaurs, Armed Dinosaurs, and Big Dinosaurs. I guess that means we'll be eating a few more Happy Meals in the upcoming weeks so we can review the toys on the show, right? Why are you shaking your head no? It's a Happy Meal. It'll make me happy. Fine, I'll keep going. Our final story tonight is about a new mobile dinosaur experience. Many of you might be familiar with Jurassic Quest. According to their website, Jurassic Quest is the largest exhibition of life-size moving museum-quality dinosaurs in North America. Normally, Jurassic Quest fills convention centers. However, in the time of the coronavirus, that is not as accessible of an option. However, to quote the famous line, Life finds a way. <laughs> yes, Jurassic Quest has evolved and is now presenting Jurassic Quest... The drive through Experience. This new version of Jurassic Quest is starting its tour now, and we have some exciting news. We're going! <laughs> Jurassic Quest, the drive through Experience, is coming to uh, Cincinnati, which is where S'mores and Dinosaurs is based out of, starting this weekend. We're taking the crew of S'mores and Dinosaurs down to get some videos so we can report back to you what it's like. So look for that video coming very, very soon. And with that, we've come to the end of another episode of the Trilobite Report.
If you're interested in learning more about any of the stories that we've reported on today, links will be provided in the description of this video. For myself, Nick Rafferton, and the crew here at S'mores and Dinosaurs, we thank you for watching and encourage you to stay curious. I am so excited to go to Jurassic Quest, the drive through experience. It's insane. It's just going to be packed with dinosaurs and cars. Oh, I can't wait.